Well, welcome back everybody to our Building a Real-Time Collaborative App series. I'm Dan Walleen, a Cloud Developer Advocate at Microsoft, and uh, Aicha, you're back as well. So Hi everyone, welcome back to our series. My name is Aicha Bush, and today I'm super excited to finalize our video series with the last one, which is the most important. Excellent. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about integrating real-time Microsoft Graph notifications. So as a review, we introduced collaborative technologies. We then talked about the Fluid Framework. Aicha walked us through in the last video on setting up resources in Azure for real-time communications with Microsoft Graph. And now we're going to put it all together and show you some of the code. So Aicha, why don't you take it away? Sure. So let's quickly remember what we did in the previous video. As you remember, we set up the key vault, we set up uh, event hubs on Azure, and then we also um, create our subscription using Power Automate. Our next step is to connect our setup with Azure Functions. Now we're going to set up input as Azure Event Hubs, and then we will get our messages from Event Hubs to uh, SignalR by just the setting signal R as an output. And next step for us is just connecting with the signal R through our uh, React app so that signal R will broadcast all the data real time. Okay, so how we're gonna do that in the code is another story. Then why don't you walk us through what we're gonna do? Yeah, so as I should mentioned, we have all these different kind of puzzle pieces, if you will. So from a code standpoint, we're gonna have our index TSX in our React app. And ultimately, we want to broadcast information about real-time presence, of course. Now, to do that, as I just mentioned, we're going to have a SignalR Connections TSX. That's going to receive the information that, hey, somebody has changed presence. And that's going to cause a graph notifications to be triggered. And specifically inside of there, we're going to have a function It's called notification function. And that notification function will cause a toast message to display in the app, as you've seen in some of the demos. Now, of course, one of us could then go in and click on that toast to invite another person to come join our collaboration session. And to do that, we're going to have a graph chat function. And ultimately, that's going to be responsible for sending a chat off to Teams. Then, of course, the person can get that information in Teams, go to the URL, and they can join our collaboration session. Wow, perfect. Uh, it seems like it's long, but it's actually really easy to set up all this stuff. Shall we just get into setting up our functions first, and then maybe we look into what we did in the code side? Sounds great. OK, so in this part of the demo, I will only show you how I set up the Azure functions uh, locally. And then next, we will just walk you through how we're going to set up the rest of the code and how our project works. All right, so um, in this demo, I'm just uh, running all my functions locally. That's why I'm in my uh, code. And you can get our code uh, in our GitHub repository. It's available uh, in our code. If you go to Event Hub's Functions folder, you will see there are two functions. Let's go to Negotiate first to understand what's happening. In the Negotiate function, the only thing we are doing is the SignalR connection. Um, so the only thing you should basically do is just setting up SignalR connection string as in, as input. And in the index.js, we are only getting the connection info and we are doing the connection with the SignalR. In the broadcast, we are doing the real thing, which we set up event hub trigger as input and signal our messages as the output. So if you quickly go to index.js, you will realize that we get the event hub messages. And for each event hub message, we basically get the entire JSON data, and then we send it through the signal R. While we're doing that, instead of just sending the entire thing, we get ID and availability, and we only send those into signal R. So if you're running this project locally, make sure that you set up local dot settings.json so we sort of have a connection with everything we set up on Azure. Um, this is basically the place where I will put all of my connection string. You can get this piece of code in our GitHub repo. And now I'm going to fill out all the connection strings. Uh, I'll just get them from Azure. Let's quickly go to SignalR on Azure and get the connection string. I will copy this one and paste it over here right next to a connection string. 
And I will do exactly the same thing for event hubs. I'll go to uh, Azure portal and go to event hubs. Uh, and under the event hubs, uh, I will do one significant thing, which is basically under the share access policies, I will create a new policy. The reason I'm doing that is just to make sure that Key Vault is Key Vault consumes different policy than our local code. That's why I'm creating local functions policy. So we understand what sort of data is coming from where and so on. And the, I will just copy the connection string from here. And the next step for me is creating a new consumer group uh, for every uh, single place I call my event hub. I just want to make sure that I uh, create a new um, consumer group so I understand what where the data is coming from. And I created local for this. And now let's go to the code and paste the event hub connection string. For the sake of the demo, I'm using, um, of course, we need a storage for this to get all the data. You can uh, alternatively create a new storage or you can simply use Azure Storage Emulator. I'm going to use Storage Emulator. Let's run this one and um, let's make sure that SignalR connection uh, file has localhost 7071 uh, slash API set and let's go inside our functions folder event hubs functions and let's run our functions so this is basically all setup we need from the functions once we run the functions with all the connection strings we need you will uh, start seeing all the data coming through in the terminal right away. As you see here, we started getting data from the previous. So that means our SignalR is connected and functions are working uh, straightforward. Okay, so now that Aicha has shown how to get the Azure Functions up and running, let's see how we can get the actual app up and running. And you're gonna see it's actually super simple. We're gonna go to the root of the app, and we're going to do an npm start. So let's take a look at that. So from here, we're in the functions, but let's create a new console and notice we're at the root. And now we're just going to run npm start because the functions are already local and we can just call those directly now. Let's go ahead and do that. Now that, of course, is going to fire up our React collaboration app. So we'll give that a moment to get going here. And there we go. So we should see a browser popping up and looks like Aicha's already logged in. So we're good to go there. Now, Aicha probably wants to know when I'm available though. So let's go ahead and change my status in Teams here to that I'm present, I'm available, I'm available to join. All right, and notice that a toast message comes in. So Aicha can now invite me. That of course is gonna communicate back to Teams and send a message, we'll see that here. And there we go. And if we go ahead and go to that message, I can then run off to that URL and join the collaboration session. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now that we're in the collaboration session, I'll go ahead and log in. So we'll hit the sign in here. And we'll go through the login process that we're all so comfortable doing these days, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and there we go. So now we're both in. You can see we're logged in at the top. You can see both of our presence. Aicha can add a note. I can add a note, and we can go back and forth. And you've seen this in some of the earlier demos, but here's another note, and there we go. That's how easy it is to get the app up and running. Okay, so earlier you saw that we have our index TSX for the React app, but we need to get these live presence notifications. So to do that, I already set up the SignalR. We have those functions running locally. We have the app running, but let's talk about what SignalR is doing here. So we're gonna jump into SignalR connection.tsx. All right, now you're gonna notice in SignalR connection TSX here, we have a little function called SignalR connection. And inside of use effect, we're actually setting up the URL, and then we're also setting up a SignalR hub connection builder. Now notice we're gonna pass it the URL, some configuration information, and then we build that connection. Now once the connection's built, we go ahead and call start, 
And then once it's all started up, that means we're actually connected up to the Azure function. You'll notice that we have this connection dot on new message. Now this is really important because this is the live notification as Event Hubs is passing us data from Microsoft Graph, the functions that Aicha has already talked about, they get that data, and then SignalR is then going to push us that data, and it's going to come in right here. Now notice that's going to call a notification function and pass the message that we got from SignalR. Now Aicha is actually going to jump into the notification function in our next demo. But this is what the signal R part of the code looks like. You'll notice the final piece of this is it returns a toast container. And that's going to be responsible for the actual toast message that will show up in our application. So Aicha, why don't we talk about the next part of this and the notification? Yes, exactly. So Okay, Dan already show us how the signal R connection works. Next step for us, how the notification works in the background of the signal R. So we will get the data from signal R, and then uh, as you saw in the previous demo, we call notification function, which is inside the graph notifications TSX file. And then I'll just walk you through how the graph part of the story works. Okay, let's jump into the demo. I will just continue where Dan left off from the toast container. As you see in the signal R function, we already called notification uh, function, Dan already mentioned this. Let's quickly go to graph notifications TSX and find the notification function. Here is our function. And what we do here basically is directly get the JSON file, which is the data we have. Um, and as you remember from the file, we have ID and the availability of the per person. We use this data to call graph and make sure that we retrieve everything about that person and we consume this data directly in the notification. So um, here, uh, we first of all use this data to check uh, some sort of information about that person. If you see in the if function, we check the person uh, availability, if it is available or if it is do not disturb. And we make sure that uh, we only get notification once the availability is available. Uh, and uh, if the person's uh, status is available, then we send a toss notification with a MGT person. Uh, which is Microsoft Graph Toolkit person component. And we also insert button here uh, to send notification to the uh, person, person through Teams. Uh, we only do that to invite the new person as long as they're available. And um, here in, inside the button, we call uh, Graph Chat. And I will talk you through how we call Teams Graph API here. And the next step is just calling the toast notification and sending the message. If you also want to send notification whenever user inside the chat with us uh, becoming do not disturb or busy or basically change their status and become something other than available. Because we want to make sure that everybody in the brainstorm app is uh, available. If something happens, we want to get notified about that too. Uh, and then the user's logged in user status changes, we again send the same toast notification and we again use the same Microsoft Graph Toolkit person component. Um, next step, let's go through the chat, Graph Chat, and understand how uh, we call Teams uh, Graph API here to send notification to the new user, the available user. Under the Graph Chat uh, function, um, we basically call Teams Graph API here uh, to send a message to the user. And here is we call Graph Client API and we call the chats. Uh, and here, uh, as you see, parse chat that value that ID is basically the user ID we are getting from the signal R. So we make sure that it's exactly the same person. And chat message is the one we create ourselves with the uh, fluid uh, framework URI inside so that a person can click on it and join the conversation in the brainstorm app. If person doesn't have any one-on-one -on -one conversation with us before, we also want to make sure that we create a new one-on-one -on -one chat conversation with them. And then we again call the Graph API to send a message uh, on Teams. This is basically what we do in the code. And you can check our code on GitHub repo. And you can basically create the entire thing by yourself uh, walking through the readme guideline available in GitHub repository. 
All right, so in the last demo, you saw Aicha walk us through how once SignalR gets the data, how it can then handle that data to show the toast message and then even invite the user using Teams. And that way they can get that URL and join our collaboration session. So we hope that walks you through some of the key building blocks. Obviously, there's quite a bit of code there, but we'll have a link here where you can get to the repository and you can kind of study it at your own pace. But as a quick review on what we've covered in these four sessions we've done, we started off by introducing the key technologies that are involved from Microsoft Graph to various Azure services like Event Hubs and SignalR and more. Uh, we then went into the Fluid Framework and talked about the collaboration aspect and how we can get real-time data passed back and forth. And real-time data in the sense of a collaboration real-time data. That's what Fluid Framework is all about because you also saw SignalR can retrieve real-time data and push that to us. But there's a difference between those. I view SignalR as kind of messaging and Fluid Framework as really true collaboration of the data between people. Now from there, Aicha, do you want to walk us through that third one? Yes, of course. By the way, Fluid Framework was something new to me as well, and I learned a lot from that part of the video. And after that, we, of course, uh, take a look at uh, how we can set up real-time um, Microsoft Graph change notifications in our app. And we set up all of our resources in Azure uh, using Key Vault as well as Event Hubs. And after setting up those on um, Azure, we, of course, use those items, items to create our subscription. And and to create subscription, we uh, chose a product uh, in the low code side, we use Power Automate. You can of course do that by consuming uh, the subscription in your own code, or you can use tools like uh, Graph Explorer or Postman. For us, we just wanted to maintain the uh, exp expiration time, so we go for the low code tool Power Automate. It was easy for us. And of course, as the last step of that video, we set up SignalR so that we can broadcast all the real-time data in our app. And finally, in our last video, this one, we cover everything about integrating real-time notifications into our app uh, by creating the functions and connecting through the SignalR. And we, of course, uh, do some of the graph calls to make sure that our notification data shows our uh, users' information as well as we consume uh, some of the uh, graph APIs to send notifications uh, to our users through the Teams as well. I can't believe we reached the end. <laughs> yeah, it's been great doing this session with you, Aicha, and we hope that everybody gets a, a better idea about how we can take multiple services from the entire Microsoft Cloud, from Microsoft 365 and Azure and even uh, Power Automate, as Aicha mentioned and actually kind of put those puzzle pieces together to create some really compelling scenarios uh, that you can use at work. So thanks, Aicha, for making time to do this with me. Thank you so much, Dan, and I hope everybody enjoyed this video series. So thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.